Gene Dill is back outside. The homie Big Gene is back outside. You know it's finna go down, man. You already know it's finna go down. Let's get to it. And then people, it's the homies, Mr. 400, coming at you straight off the Ave. And this is Mr. Reacts. Salute to the subscribers one time. And if you made it to this video, go ahead, give us a like, subscribe, make new content daily. So check it out, y'all. Y'all know what I was waiting for. The homie Big Gene, he back outside. He back on the Art of Dialogue. And you already know he finna talk about this damn Diddy scenario. Look, bro. The Diddy saga continues. Back in December, I made this channel and just un unsuspectedly, or unexpectedly rather, things just kind of just, you know, started to snowball with the whole Diddy effect. Cassie came out, Mark Curry was going crazy, Gene was going crazy. I've been covering Gene since the beginning of this thing, so like, this is kind of like a, you know, kind of like the uh, climax pause moment. Of everything that's going on. So look, shout out to uh, Art of Dialogue. You feel me? Shout out to that platform for never once flagging a, a freaking reaction. Never once flagging a tripping about nothing. I appreciate you for being a part in the growth of this channel. You feel me? Because everything I cover is a part in the growth of this channel. So salute to you. You a real one. Shout out to Art. But look, shout out to Big Gene. You've been, you've been truth telling from the start. They ain't believe you, Cass been hating, but you know what it is, man. You know how that goes when you're trying to be a righteous, excuse me, a righteous truth teller. So look, man, without further ado, we're going to pull this on the stage and get to it. Let's, let's, you know what I'm saying, see what the homie Gene talking about. Gene Dill breaks silence on Diddy's arrest and reveals the celebrities who influ influence, excuse me, Diddy's actions. Let's get to it. Gene Deal, let's get right into it. Diddy, he got indicted. You called it, man. A few weeks ago, you was on the platform, and you said that he was going to get arrested in September. Yeah, man. Uh, anybody who in law enforcement or people know the law, when Homeland Security ran up into his house, uh, people would tell you, or people knew that it was just a matter of time that they was going to indict him and bring him in uh, to see the judge, bro. It was just a matter of time. Uh, I just figured out with the grand jury and their different sessions and stuff like that. And then what uh, one of the uh, witnesses told me, I just figured it out that it was going to be around September that they were going to bring him in, bro. Look, shout out to him for that prediction because a lot of people were like, yo, he capping. I ain't going to hold you. I almost made a video like, yo, it's September, Gene. What's happening? But, you know, something deep down in my gut, bro told me to just be patient like he said it's a matter of time they gotta get they you know line they ducks in a row you know what i'm saying dot their i's and cross their t's you feel me make sure everything is straight with these charges because they don't want to look stupid you gotta you know you gotta take into account the district that actually made these charges you feel me so they don't want to look dumb at the end of the day and they gotta make sure you know whatever they come at him with is solid and that's why we have the charges that we have today let's get to it um, this is, it's, people might not understand. It's difficult when you see a brother that has so much promise become an icon as far as in the music business and stuff that he did, uh, to turn around and, um, just tear his whole life down. But it's all because of his mentors and the people that trained him and taught him the music business. You know, it's all about the people who trained and taught him the music business because Puff wasn't, um, uh, uh, he wasn't born a monster. You know what I'm saying? He was made into a monster, brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was made into a monster from the stuff that happened to him, the things that he had to do. You understand? The things that he had to do to become who he is. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same way when you got like a situation where like, you know, you come into a job, you a new employee, 
however your trainer trains you to be, that's pretty much how you learn, you know, the job. You feel me? So in this case, whoever trained Diddy or gave him the ropes as to what to do and how to move in the industry in order to climb up and be successful, they're ultimately at fault for planting that seed, which turned into what it is today. You feel me? Well, you got decades of alleged abuse and um, trauma being, you know, placed on all types of victims. It's madness, bro. But that's the same trauma that was placed on him. Allegedly. You know, it's like this, brother. You never like something so much that you can't do it out. And you never be willing to do anything to get where you want to be at. You got to have principles. You got to have morals. You got to keep with that stuff. And in that music business, a lot of that stuff get thrown out the window. You understand? And that's what happened to him. He started doing the things to other people that was done to him. And I personally can say that as one who has navigated this music industry for, you know, pretty much, damn, like over half of my life, bro. And I've been, you know, put into these rooms and I've been placed with, you know, or excuse me, presented with certain uh, situations and things that compromise my morals and compromise, you know, who I am and my integrity as a man. You feel me? So I wasn't with a lot of ish. I ain't go to a lot of parties. I ain't go to a lot of, you know what I'm saying, random events because I knew what was taking place and I knew that just wasn't what I was finna get down with in order to, you know, advance my career. So you know, to each his own, but a lot of times these artists, they feel obligated to go ahead and do what it is that a lot of these artists end up doing, taking part in these freak offs, you know what I'm saying, ish, you know, to say the least, and um, among other things, rather, and, um, you know, that's just how it go in the industry. To keep it frank, he was doing the things to other people that was done to him, and it is what it is. You got to know better. And if you know better, you would do better. When he was in New York City, he was like that gecko from the Geico commercial. Then he turned and start uh, going, when he lived in Cali and Miami, he turned to Godzilla. I would see him talk about how he using drugs. He was never like that. Smoking cigarettes, smoking weed and everything like that. He turned into something that you could consider a monster, bro. Then he started doing things to people. You understand that he learned. That's a learned behavior, bro. Now, I'm not saying that he may have been doing a couple of things here and there with women, stuff like that in New York. But the things that they're talking about that he was doing, bringing in prostitutes to have sex with his girl and all that stuff like that. That was some crazy stuff to me, man. So, And you know they say hurt people hurt people. Let's just keep that in mind. Hurt people hurt people. Let's continue. So I'm just looking at this whole thing, man. And um, you had asked me, and, and we don't have these conversations like most people do. We're going to go back and you're going to tell me what uh, uh, we're going to talk about this. You said, I'm going to ask you how you feel, bro. I don't want to I don't want no man to ever go to jail and be leaving their kids behind, be leaving their family behind. You understand? But some dudes belong in jail based on what they do and how they do it. We know that to be true. And it's just this situation, man, um when they get down to all the facts and all what happened, he may belong in jail, bro. And that's not my doing. That's not Cassie doing. That's his doing and his learned behavior from the people that mentored him. And what's crazy is the reason that they denied this man's bail, like as of now, they denied his bail for the second time. Reason being because, you know, this man done been in contact with witnesses. He'd been witness tampering. He'd been trying to be intimidating. He was trying to pay people off. You feel what I'm saying? And um, outside of his abuse of drugs, it's like, bro, we can't let this cat out. And he knows the severity of these charges. 
You feel me? So we got to lock him down. And look, man, nobody wants to see nobody taken away from his family. He got beautiful daughters. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Kim Porter. The kids that they had together. You feel me? So it's a sad scenario. But at the same time, it's bro. It's, 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 look, it's got to stop at some point. Justice got to be served. You feel what I'm saying? At the end of the day, justice got to be served. And, you know, allegedly this man has been terrorizing Ish for decades, bro. Allegedly this man is responsible for the loss of two of the most talented and pivotal figures in hip-hop. Allegedly. Among other things. So, look, bro. Everything come to light, bro. Everything come to light. You know, when it comes to, look, and I don't like to get religious or like spiritual, so I talk about the Bible, but the devil never wins. He never wins, bro. He never wins. Keep that in mind, bro. There is no good ending for the bad guy in the story. Point blank, period. Let's continue. You got to realize, man, you got to, you, you, he learned from Andre Harrell. He learned from Russell Simmons. He learned from Clyde Davis. You understand when those people are 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 telling you that they were in heavy into the drugs, they was heavy into beating women and doing things at that age at, at that crazy stage. That's gonna make him think that he could get away with the same thing that they was getting away with back then. You understand the things that he was saying. You know the touchy feely between two men and all that stuff like that, man. All that's he learned that from them dudes. When I told y'all the story, when me and my man went up to Russell Simmons and he had a house and he had a, 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 um, a man in bikini drawers in his bedroom, in his bed. You understand? Bro, this is that he learned. I'm, I'm assuming he learned it from them. And it's crazy because you got a situation where like back in the day, Usher was around him. And Usher on Howard Stern saying he saw the life. He went to see the life and he saw the life. Who knows what Usher saw? Who knows what Usher endured now? We know that Usher, and it's a fact, went to the hospital. Backside was busted up. Needed some stitches. It's crazy. But check it out. Ish is real out here. For decades, this man been doing this ish. It's wow, bro. Wow. Crazy. Let me put that, and I, I'm not going to say alleged because I saw that for my own self. My man was with me, Slick was with me, and we saw that for our own self. You understand what I'm saying? So these are behaviors and things that with drugs and all the stuff that's going on, pills, uh, uh, drinking, uh, it, make, it can make this man into a monster, and that's what it did, bro. It made him into a monster, bro. I personally feel like he got a lot of the things that he did from his mentor, and then he probably uh, 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 did it to the to the tenth power. You understand? Uh, Russell Simmons admitted that he was a drug abuser. You understand? Uh, Russell Simmons meant that he used to put his hands on women. So it's a learned behavior, bro. Some of that stuff may be in him through his childhood. Through his childhood, he may have some of that things in him, but a lot of things that he was doing was a learned behavior, bro. You just don't, <laughs> you just don't just, just turn it in, in a matter of years, the way he was doing people, man. You understand? Check this out, bro. He led Biggs to his death. He caused a rift between Wolf and BMF that led to Wolf death. Cuss Wolf mother out. Lied about all him 300,000. Because you had asked me how I feel, and, and, and I'm going to get into how I feel. Took a good friend of ours who raised money when he had the city college tragedy. A good friend of ours 
did things to make him popular in Harlem. Let him hang with us, be part of our crew the whole nine yards. Disrespected him and wouldn't help him. This is how I feel about him being locked up and going to jail. Some people, their karma is so strong for what they do and what they did. The stuff that he did to Craig Mack. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff that he did to Black Rob and all those people in the spiritual world right now. His karma was about to catch up. It was bound to catch up with him. You understand what I'm saying? His karma was bound to catch up with him, brother. So all these things that's going on right now, the learned behavior, what he got from these, these people who was not living spiritually correct, with their behaviors and the things that they've done. He go and transfer and do that to people with the fact of all these people that he's hurt, that always helped him and been on his side and been there for him. What's happening to him now is one of the greatest tragedies that we're going to ever read about, bro. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies that Shakespeare couldn't write in Richard. He couldn't write it in Macbeth. He couldn't write this shit in homie, Romeo and Juliet. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies of hip hop, along with Pac's death, along with Big's death. And he brought it on himself because he knew that he was wrong and he knew that he learned something that wasn't right. He no different from right and wrong, bro. You have a, you have a way to, to, to change. You know when something is right and when something is wrong. And you know if you're wrong, you get help. He didn't choose none of that, bro. He chose to be who he is. And now he's going to learn. It ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. That's for darn sure. Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun in this man's case. And you know, it's a sad scenario. It's like he was talking about how did he was as opposed to how did he end up becoming based on the people he was around, based on the people who groomed him to be whatever it is that he became. And it reminds me of, uh, you ever see that picture, bro? It'd be like pictures of like good fruit sitting next to like Bad fruit covered with nasty mold and bull ish, and they be close. And then, like, where they at, like, the, the good fruit starts to become moldy. It's like your environment and the people who you around, uh, like, essentially determine who you are. Like, birds of a feather flock together. So, if you're around a bunch of sick individuals, either you're going to be like I was and say, hey, bro. This a little twisted. I'm not cool with that. You married. Why is these chicks here? What's going on with this? You feel me? I need to remove myself. This is not the company I'm trying to keep. I'm not on this energy. Either you're going to do that or you're going to be like, oh, he married? Oh, he married too? My shorty ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? And you're just going to do what you do. And then it, it it snowballs into extra things, you feel me? But it may start like that. They give you a girl, whatever, when you come into the door. Like, even if you watch uh, Making a Band, bro, he telling them if you got a relationship, it's not going to work. That's going to, you got to dead that now. If you're in a relationship, you feel me? Like, it was one individual on the show. I forget her name, bro. Sarah. She was in a relationship. That ish went in the trash because did he not go on? I mean, come on. The industry is like full of wolves. <laughs> You're not about to be trying to be married and live righteous. That's not what this is about. This is the dark side. You feel me? So he took, you know, he tried to take as many to the dark side as he possibly could. And playing in the dark side, he got got. You feel me? The dark got to come to light. It got to look. Night turns to day at some point in time. 
the light going shine. You feel me? But um, tragic scenario, like the homie said, bro, because, you know, you go from such, like, you got two mansions, you got all this lavish life, and then you in one of the worst facilities in Brooklyn, federal facilities in Brooklyn, where there's allegedly mice and there's, you know, no heat or, you know what I mean, AC or nothing, there's violence going on, and, you know, it's it's just like, bro, you was on demon time. You was on big, lower level, low energy demon time, and now you in there with them boys. So you got to go ahead and stand on that, bro. You got to stand on that. Diddy got to stand on it. <laughs> but shout out to Gene Dill, bro, for being accurate. Look, man, I believe in prophets. I believe in people sent here to do Jah's will. I feel like I'm one of them. You feel me? Like, you can't, yeah, you can't go against them type people. You feel me? And, you know, them type people move differently. Like, you know, like, I'm pretty sure Gene moved with, like, Ja protecting him in his mind. He leaving it all to God, bro. He leaving it all to the higher power, G. He not even worried about no, like, no man or no weapon form against me shall prosper type energy. You feel what I'm saying? So, shout out to Gene for that. But yeah, man, the chickens have come to roost for Diddy. It just is what it is, bro. If you made it put, excuse me, if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead, give us a like and subscribe. Shout out to the subscribers wherever you at, all over the world. You feel what I'm saying? We appreciate you for subscribing. It's the best way to support free support. Anybody out there want to donate? You feel what I'm saying to the channel, which would go to like you know better equipment, just this, that, and the third. You feel what I'm saying? Everything for the channel. We want to donate. Cash app, you feel what I'm saying, is right over there. Right there. You feel me? Holla at me. Super thanks. Super chats. I mean, it's not super chats. This is a recorded John. So super thanks. And yeah, man. Definitely appreciate everybody that subscribed. We're on a roll to 10K. So share this. Like this up. Get the algorithm going crazy. Straight off the Ave. Illest podcast in Central PA. Look, we out here. Point blank, period. It's the homie Mr. 400. This has been Mr. Reacts. Thanks for tuning in wherever you at all over the world. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And yeah, till next time, y'all have a good one. Peace and love. Owie.